Today, on the Father Figure Cooking Show, we got a real treat. We're gonna make something called Fesenjun. Fesenjun. I don't really know how to pronounce it because it's Persian food. But we got someone who's gonna help us with that. So, here's our special guest. Mahaj, thanks for being here in our kitchen. We're so glad to have you. I'm happy to be with you guys. Thanks for having me, Jordan. Uh, thanks for having me, Amanda. So this is a Persian specialty. It's called Fesin June. I'm gonna make it for me and Amanda June. And uh, first thing you're gonna do is we gotta prepare these chicken thighs. Fesin June is sort of a dish with some pomegranate, some walnuts, some chicken. It's pretty simple, but a lot of people don't know all about it. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Just gonna cover them nicely with salt and pepper here. Get them nicely coated. Got my salt on here. Uh, my fresh ground pepper, you know, get them coated all, you know, be liberal with it. Most people don't use enough salt and pepper, you know, turn them all over. I'm going to get both sides, so I'm just going to turn these chicken thighs. These are boneless, skinless thighs, and I'm just going to do what we can. So what we're going to do is we're going to just brown all these chicken breasts in some butter and oil. Um, we're going to do that in just a minute, just waiting for this to heat up. I got my butter on high heat here. In Persian, the word jun is a term of endearment. So okay. for example, you can turn to Amanda and say, Amanda jun. And oh. that's like, all right? Amanda jun. <laughs> you see? And she could say Jordan June. Jordan, it's a term of endearment. You do it with your, with the, you know, your your loved one. You could do it with like kids. You're gonna take these chicken thighs here, and what you're gonna do with them is you're gonna put them right in here. Uh, you want to put that top side, the side that, that would have had the skin on it. You want to put that down first. So that's what I'm gonna do over here. I'm just gonna lay them all out here. I got eight of them here. Just gonna put eight of these chicken thighs in the oil. Try not to get your fingers in there, that's hot. Let those cook for about two minutes to get them brown. And in the meantime, what you're gonna do is take your onions and you're gonna do what's called zoomianning the onions, okay? That looks like this. You know, the important thing is no, a lot of people cut them this way. I like to cut them this way. Um, I don't know, I read an article on the internet once that said that, you know, cutting them this way makes them have less of the sulfur in it, which is what makes your eyes tear. So inst again, instead of going across those rings, I go along the sides. Hold those for a second. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip my chicken, okay? Flip, they should be browning on one side here, so I'm just gonna flip them. You can see how they're getting a nice, crusty top with that sort of caramelized uh, crispy brown on the top. Just let them sit for about two minutes like that now. Two. Yeah, I'll give you a one minute breakdown. So um, the people of the Middle East, it's, it's a region and there's a lot of different countries. So there's some countries that are uh, ethnically Arab. There's some countries that are, uh, you know, Persians were, were actually, we come from the Caucasus Mountains, the word Iranian. The Arab countries all speak Arabic. Iranians, we speak Persian, our language is different. So it's like the difference between, let's say, Spanish and Portuguese. Like some words are similar, but it's totally different. And by the way, it's Iran, it's not Iran. <laughs> are you from Iran? I go, no, I'm from Iran, okay? Um, so those are some simple things. And by the way, our foods are delicious and our people are good people. In all honesty, I think that a lot of Americans have a false idea of who the people are from the Middle East. Um, most of the people from those parts of the world are good people. It's been about two minutes now, so I'm gonna pull that chicken now out of that pan, okay? So I'm just gonna pull it out like this. Uh, you can put it right in the same pan. I know a lot of people probably like, but you had raw chicken on that pan. And it's true, this chicken is actually still pretty raw. All I did was brown the outside of it. Um, so it's okay. Uh, and I'm gonna cook it all more again later. So what I'm gonna do is, now that I've got that, uh, the chicken coat and throw these onions in the pan. Ooh. 
gonna stir this around, maybe turn it down to medium while I do this. You get the some of that crispy yumminess off the bottom there. You know, just get these onions to start to brown. And then we're gonna take those onions, just take them right out of the pan. We'll lay them right on top of the chicken like this. Just like just pour them all in. We're gonna go back in at the same time later. Get them all there. Put your pan back on the top. Turn your heat on low. And the next part I'm gonna do, Amanda June, this part is nuts. Okay, are you ready for it, Amanda June? I'm ready. It's nuts, ready? You're gonna take your nuts. <laughs> Get it? It's nuts, huh? Yeah. This is about a cup and a half of walnuts. Um, I'm gonna just stick them right in this food processor. And I'm gonna warm them up a bit, you know, just a little whoop. Okay. We gotta get that perfect line between dust and butter. We don't wanna turn it into warm butter. We don't want it to get pasty, but we want it to be like pretty completely chopped, you know? And if you wanna have fun with this, you can be like, yeah, let's do it. Love the t-shirt, my friend. Thank you, thank, thank you. It's, a, it, it's very slimming. It's very, you know, because I'm middle-aged at this point, you know. Yes, you're middle-aged and you are also medium, you know, you're trying to keep your medium figure to go with the middle age. Everything middle is good. Everything middle is good, medium, yeah. You know, it's like this. Sometimes Iranians will say they're Persian because Iran has such a negative connotation given the politics and how people see it that people say we're Persian so nobody will bother us. All right, once you got them all chopped up like this, like, you know, like we got them like pretty dusty, okay? And you know, you can toast these walnuts first. A lot of people like to toast them just to get a deep, deep walnut flavor in. But I'm not gonna toast them because what I'm gonna do now, stick them in this oil, in this pan, and anything else. I'm just gonna mix them around in that pan and basically try to toast them here. Just stir up those walnuts. We're just toasting them up a little bit. You could add a little butter or oil if you want, but I'm, I'm not going to. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take about half a cup of pomegranate molasses, okay? So this is basically a molasses that's made from pomegranate. They take pomegranate and they reduce it down till it's like a syrupy, sugary consistency, okay? Maybe get a good shot of this. I bought it on Amazon. You could buy it on Amazon. It's not that hard to find pomegranate molasses. One of the great things about this dish is the pomegranate. And you know, pomegranate has all this like symbolic stuff behind it. Like people think pomegranates are the original fruit in the Garden of Eden, like probably not an apple, you know, it was probably because apples uh, uh, don't come from that part of the world. It was probably pomegranate. A real pomegranate, if you've had one, unfortunately I couldn't find any whole ones today, so I have just the seeds. But real pomegranates, they're very sexual looking, I think, with all this like bloody red seeds. They're associated with fertility. Uh, in ancient Greece, Persephone goes down to the underworld. She, it, she eats like three pomegranate seeds, I think, and then she has to stay in Hades. It's like cardinal sin of all time. And you know, in Islamic culture, the Quran, the pomegranate is associated with dates and figs and olives, all the like real key fruits. So we're gonna take this pomegranate molasses here. This is a key part of this. I'm gonna put about half a cup in here, okay? So I'm gonna put, it's 10 ounces total, so I'm gonna put a little more than half into here, okay? Here we go. You can see how it just runs out, it starts to sizzle. Oh, it's this kind of sexual even too. You know what I mean? Is that sizzling. sexual for you, Jordan? I'm just saying, you're right. I shouldn't make food sexual, that's weird. Yeah. Stir that up, get that, the nuts. <laughs> nuts. Get those nuts nice and covered. These nuts, get these nuts. <laughs> these nuts, get it? Oh yeah, that smells really good. Then we're gonna take this, uh, I got two cups of low sodium chicken stock. We're also gonna put two cups in here, okay? It's really such an amazing part of the world and I've had a chance to go to do stand-up comedy in that part of the world now um, for a while. 
And I highly recommend, I tell people, I say, go, go to the United Arab Emirates, Dubai, visit Dubai, visit Abu Dhabi, all those places. But while you're there, make sure you go to Lebanon and see Beirut and the other places there. Go to Jordan, go to Egypt, go see all these, go to Oman. There's so much to see and so many good people. And then just mix that up. It's really not that appetizing looking yet, but it will be, it'll be delicious. Just kind of get it all combined here, get anything that's stuck on the bottom. Bring that up to a simmer, throw in a cinnamon stick. Uh, if you want, you can throw in some turmeric. I think I have some turmeric down here. Yeah, a little bit of turmeric, throw maybe a little bit in, it'll make it like, make it a little yellower. Just put it in like maybe half a teaspoon of turmeric. I'll put in nutmeg if you want. Um, you know, I'm not gonna do all that. I think it's gonna be good enough. It already smells really sweet and delicious. You know, it's gonna have that tanginess of, that, of the pomegranates. Anyway, once it starts to boil, I'm gonna take it down to a low heat for a simmer. You wanna get that heat going down, there we go. You know, very low simmer. And we're gonna let that cook for about an hour before we do anything else. Okay, so I'm just gonna take that. Uh, I'm gonna actually cover it up here. Let it cook for an hour. You can make it whenever you want. I think you might be right in the celebration part of it simply because it's such a rich tasting food. People need to know Persian food, the base is rice. The same way Italian food is, is pasta, ours is rice. And then the way they have different sauces they put on the pasta, we have different sauces we put on top or broths we put on top of our rice. And I'll be honest with you, per, the closest description to Persian food for my American friends is I say it's like Indian food but it's not as spicy, it's not as hot, um, and it's very flavorful. So something like fesenjun is an amazing broth or topping, which it has walnuts, it's got pomegranates, it's got um, uh, usually made with chicken, you can do a vegetarian version of it, and it's this brown kind of very rich tasting, sweet taste. It's got sweet, it's got oil. I mean, it's like when I see fesenjun at a party, Forget it. It's like, okay, I'm going to be indulging and then falling asleep happy tonight. I have an aunt who's actually a young aunt. She's close to my age, but she's a badass cook. And so every Thanksgiving and Christmas when we'd go, I, I actually do a joke in my new special about this. I say Thanksgiving at our house is amazing because we have Persian food, Indian food. Nobody touches the turkey. <laughs> um, you know, because I'm like, you know, you walk by the turkey, turkey's like gobble, gobble. I'm like, F you, turkey. I have 4,000 years of cuisine combined, all right? <laughs> so it's been cooking about an hour, and what we're going to do is we're going to try to make this like Persian rice, the good Persian rice with the tadik. I've never really done this, so we'll see how this comes out. The Persians let the bottom of the rice cook a little bit extra so it gets crispy. It's crispy rice, and we call it no, tadig. No. Dig in Persian means the pot. Ta yeah. means the end. So it's the end of the pot, and they and it's oilier down there. And so this thing comes out nice and crispy, and you flip it over. Now you got the crispy top, and then you got the rice underneath. Now if you can extricate that crispy top, that's the tadig. You put a little tadig on the side. You take a little bit of fesenjun, put on the tadig. Woo! Forget it. First thing you do, I've got some. Basmati rice here that I've been soaking for about 30 minutes. First, I rinsed it in this Japanese rice bowl to, until the water ran clear, and then I soaked it for about 30 minutes. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna drain out the water, okay? So I'm just gonna, uh, you got your soaked rice here. I've got some boiling water over here in this pan. I'm gonna salt it up really, really well here. Just add a ton of salt in there and make it nice and salty because the rice is gonna absorb that salt. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this rice, I'm gonna put it in this boiling water, make sure it's boiling fast, and I'm gonna just pour it all in there. You know, get any there. Turn the heat up so it comes to a boil. We're gonna let it cook for five minutes. No, no, of course I got, you know, it's funny because when they were a little younger, um, we had fun coming up with jokes. And so I came up with a couple that are just silly dad jokes. Like for, you know, this is, they, they gotta be much younger to get it, but, or for, or for I should say, not, not to get it. They should gotta be younger for them to enjoy it. Anyway, 
Your rice has been cooking for about five minutes. After about five minutes, you want to take your rice. We're going to drain it. So again, I'm going to take my special rice bowl, do it over the sink here, and just pour this in. Okay, pour the rice in here. And drain it out. Now, five minutes, not enough to cook the rice. The rice is not cooked yet. It's just sort of parboiled at this point. And you can see, if you look at it, we got some, you know, they're nice grains. Um, if you want to taste this and see what it's like, it's soft on the outside, still crunchy on the inside. That's, that's awesome. Now, I'm going to put a cast iron pan here. I'm going to take some butter, and I'm going to be really generous with the butter because we're going to get a nice crispy bottom here. I'm going to melt that butter, and again, I'm going to use a turmeric, okay? Saffron super expensive, so you might not have it. I happen to not have any. wasn't able to get any good quality saffron for this. I'm going to just sort of cheat and not use saffron at all. I'll use some turmeric, which will still make it sort of yellow on the bottom, uh, and it'll have a good turmeric flavor. Uh, so I'm just going to sprinkle again about it probably put about a teaspoon in there. And again, I'm going to take this spoon, I'm going to just stir this turmeric, 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 get it? You can see it gets nice and bubbly in there, in yellow. That's going to be awesome. And what's going to happen here is that the butter is going to toast that turmeric, and then it's also going to start to brown, like brown butter, and that's going to give us a nice crust at the bottom. So then I'm going to take this rice, okay, and I'm going to take this rice, this par-cooked rice, I'm going to take about, I'm going to take about maybe a third of it, maybe more, and I'm going to just, you want to pack that down in the bottom really good, like you don't want to play games, like this is all about getting this crispy bottom, so pack it down real good here the back of your spoon or whatever you have you, it, it's important to really pack it in like you want that starch to get thick and heavy down here at the bottom once that's packed down take the rest of your rice and just put it on top and you want to form like a, 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 a pyramid on top poke some holes you can use the back of this just to let that steam through Okay, and then you want to take a towel like this. You want to wrap that towel around the lid like this, okay? So we form a real nice uh, airtight, keep that steam in. When you cover it, just be careful here that you don't- Set the towel on fire? Set the towel on fire, but that's why we're going to turn it down to a real low flame here. That seems kind of dangerous. This is, listen, they've been making it like this for 4,000 years. And just let that cook. That's going to cook for 45 minutes like that. While that's cooking, you're going to take your chicken and onions, okay? And we're going to pour them into this delicious pomegranate molasses walnut broth here. We're going to make a stew, okay? Just pour that all in. Take your spoon here. Make sure they're all nice and covered. The onions, the chicken. We're going to add all that oniony chicken flavor. Again, let that simmer. You're not going to cover it this time, actually. We're going to let it simmer with the chicken in there now. See, there's too much steam coming out of my rice here. We're not getting. We're not keeping the steam in. Oh, it's because we're setting the towel on fire. <laughs> we set the towel on fire. I knew that was going to happen. All right, so. I got a better idea. Look at this, this is not good. This is not good. This is what you don't want to do. Fire, fire, fire on the towel. Don't do that. So we'll try a different strategy. We're gonna take a bit of aluminum foil, which is not the authentic way. And we're gonna just cover this up good with the aluminum foil so that top stays on, you know. I hope Maz still approves of this. Without the towel. I don't know how it's gonna feel without the towel. We use this giant lid here, right here on top of the towel. That'll hold it. That's gonna be good. No towel. Don't use the towel. The towel is dangerous. Fire hazard. Unless you are really Iranian, unless you're really Persian, don't mess with the towel. I would love to learn to cook. I haven't really delved into it as much as I should. We did get a grill recently and then it got cold. So I'm waiting for it to get hot and I'm gonna try grilling. Cause what happened was I grilled, um, we got some steak for New Year's Eve 
and I'd never really grill the steak. So I, I asked my wife what we should do. And she's like, just don't over, don't over, um, uh, uh, um, spice or over, over, uh, you know, no, not too much salt, not too much pepper, whatever. We just, we kept it simple. And then the, the look of disappointment on everyone's faces as they were eating the steak. I was like, oh, I didn't. I do a lot of laundry. I do a lot of dishes. Under the pandemic, I've become, I, I call myself the utility man. Like I do every, like I'll do, I'll, we got a puppy, pandemic puppy. So I'll walk the dog. I do the dishes. I uh, do the laundry. I did electric, I did some electrical work. That was the, that was the big one. Cause I had to make sure I had the right fuse off. Cause I told my wife, I go, if, if you hear some explosion, you know, call 911. I, I turn off the wrong fuse. Yeah, I would say to some extent, I try to be, you know, I'm, I'm very much try to be the same with both of them. I'm very much like, you know, it's not even for me, their, their sex doesn't make a difference as much as their, um, I, just, I just try to be supportive of what they want to do. Because I grew up with immigrant parents who tried to push me in the direction they wanted me to go, to be a lawyer, doctor, engineer. And it took so many years of struggling until I was in my mid-20s till I finally decided to do what I wanted to do that I just tell them, I support you no matter what you do, uh, uh, go for it. Um, and, uh, and, and the one thing that I did learn from you was this idea of, you know, you might be the hero in your own story, but just remember that you might be the villain in someone else's story. That was, a, that was really good for me to think because, and it ha that has nothing to do with gender, that has more to do with the idea of them being kids and me being an adult. And in my mind, I'm like, my life is more important than your life. And then since you said that, I decided, you know what? Sometimes their life is as important. You know, I got to pay attention to them. My daughter's definitely the hero of every one of her stories. I mean, <laughs> as soon as we get in the car, she's 10 years old. As soon as we get in the car, it's like, there's no, she's not even registering that I'm in the car. She's as soon as I get in the car, can you turn on the, can we get this song? Can I play a song? Let me, let me do a song. Can we get a song? Let, let me do a song. I get her the song. And then, and then, you know, Hey, uh, can I do this? Can I do this? She's in her own world. And I'm, I'm, I'm definitely the, the sidekick here. I'm the Robin to her Batman or what that, talk about gender bending, right? She's not, but she's Batman. Yeah. Batwoman, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Definitely. You know, I don't talk about that as much in the special. First of all, thanks for watching the special. Um, but, uh, yeah, my dad was very much a manly man to the point where my older sister, my, my dad, like my sister was two years older than me and they would go, my sister and my aunt who makes the Fessenjun were the same age. So they were kind of like two older sisters to me. And they would go, we, we grew up in Marin County, Northern California. When they were in their early teens, they started going clubbing in, in the city. But to go, they had to sneak out of the house because there was no way my dad would let them go. So they would, everyone would go to sleep and then they would sneak out their window and they would tell me to just shut up. They'd be like, don't tell anyone we're going, da, da, da. So as they turned a little older, like maybe they were like 16 or so, now I'm 14. And then they decided to use me as a pawn because my dad was such a manly man. In his mind, the fact that I was gonna go with them made it okay. I'm 14 at the time, they're 16. <laughs> You're gonna protect so, them. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, we're not even supposed to get into clubs anyway. My dad didn't even ask about like, oh, none of you are 21 or 18. How are you getting in a club? He didn't care about that. It was just like, oh, you're going to go. Okay. As long as Maz is going with you. All right. Be careful. You know, take care of the women and, you know, be home on time. And I was like, gotcha, dad. You know, we're, we're going. So definitely that's how he saw the world. I mean, for us, I would say that, you know, sometimes when my son and daughter, we live in a good neighborhood, when they go for a walk, I, I will, you know, sometimes I get a little, I'm, I'm more, I'm, I feel more secure when my son's with her. But that's simply because of the age as opposed to the gender in that situation. Because um, I really want them to, because also as a parent, look, we live in a generation now where we've read thousands of books on parents and you've written books on parenting. So I don't think our parents read books as much back when we were kids about parenting. But one of the things that I've learned is <clears throat> trying to instill them with a sense of independence and not coddle them to the point where they're going to go off to college and then be like, oh my God, how do I do my laundry? You know, so 
I try as much as I can for both of them to give them independence. Okay, now your rice should be done by now. Still got the simmering pheasant, June. Okay, we're gonna take this rice out, see if we can manage to do this the right way, see if we got the tabi. Now, you can see it should look, it looks good. We got a little bit of yellow. If we got this right, we should be able to get a nice crispy cake on the bottom, come off from the bottom. I don't know if we did it, we'll find out. The way you do this, you take a plate, you put it on top of this, and you just, whoa, that's hot. I'll take this burnt towel, and you just flip the whole thing upside down. There we go. Let's see if it came, oh yeah. That's what it's supposed to look like. So you got this like crispy top. You know, maybe you can hear that. I don't know. Thump, 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 thump. You know, if, that's, if you did it right, it's gonna look like that. So now we're ready to serve it. So what we wanna do is we're gonna get, uh, I think I'll get a spatula for this. You know, cut a big slice of the crispy toddy, okay, like this. So you get some crispy rice on top here. I'm gonna put that on the plate right here like this, okay? And then I'll just put this off to the side. And then we'll take our, our fessenjun, bring that over here, just take a couple pieces that chicken, let maybe scoop it over the side here. I like to let it fall off. Now, if you've been cooking forever, so you can see it's like fall apart tender. Uh, maybe take a spoon, waffle spoon, take a spoon and, you know, we want to get some of this delicious tangy pomegranate walnut sauce all over that there. You know, a little mess there, not a big deal. And then you want to take some of these pomegranate seeds, okay? pomegranate seed, and I'm just gonna sprinkle them all over there, make it gorgeous like that. And there you have it, make it gorgeous like that, and there you have it. You got a, gr a great dish of fess and June. Do you wanna taste it, Amanda June? Oh my God, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Maz. It's been great. Thank you for hanging out while we're cooking. Thank you for hanging out in our in our, in our kitchen. We, we, we really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, and thanks for making the fess and June, my friend. What's a good night for a fish to go out? What's a good night for a fish? I don't know. What is it? Tuna night. Where do rappers go to uh, for, to shop for clothes? I don't know where. Jay Z Penny. Did you hear about the squirrel in the Garden of Eden? No. God kicked him out because he kept trying to hide his nuts. <laughs>